Hello there, welcome to the June 2018 Applied Paper. Here we're looking at question 7. A train travels along a straight horizontal track between two stations A and B. In a model of the motion, the train starts from rest to A and moves with constant acceleration 0.3 for 80 seconds. The train then moves at constant velocity before it moves with constant deceleration of 0.5 meters per second coming to rest at B. For this model of the motion of the train between A and B, state the value of the constant velocity of the train, state the time at which the train is decelerating, and sketch a velocity time graph. Okay, so let's let's start with that velocity time graph, and then we can um, have a look at those uh, other parts later on. So this will be um, time along this axis here in seconds. This will be velocity up here, and that will be in meters per second. Make sure you've got your units on there. Now it starts from rest and it accelerates at 0.3 meters per second squared for 80 seconds. Okay, so that's going to be 80 seconds. And now we need to work out what the velocity is going to be of the train here. So if it's traveling um, for 80 seconds and it's increasing its speed by 0.3 meters per second every second, then the calculation there is going to be 80 times 0.3 which is equal to 80 times 0.3 is 24. So it's going to be 24 meters per second there. Then it's going to travel at a constant speed. Uh, does it say how long for? No, I don't think it says how long for. But then the train um, will start to decelerate, coming to a rest at B. Now, this um, acceleration here is 0.3. This deceleration here is 0.5. So it's going to be a bit steeper than what we saw before. And the time of that deceleration, so the time between here and here, um, state the time for which the train is decelerating, is going to be 80. So it's going to, um, so no, it's not going to be 80, it's going to be 24 divided by 0.5, um, because that's the speed that the train is traveling at, and we want to divide it by its acceleration or deceleration. So it's going to be um, 48, 48 seconds. So the time in between here and here is 48 seconds. And that's 80 seconds there. So we've got this part from here to here, that's 80. This part from here to here that we don't know, we'll just call that T. And then this part here is 80 here. The 80 at that marker there. Okay, so there we are. So that's the answer. In fact, we should probably do a bit better on these axes here. I think we could do a bit better. If we say that t is this time in the middle, then it's going to be 80, 80 plus t. And then on this side here, it's going to be 128 plus t. So that'll be at that point in time there. That's a probably a bit better, I reckon. Okay, so let's move on to the next part then. Now, the total distance between the two stations is 4,800 metres. Using the model, find the total time taken by the train to travel from A to B. Or in other words, work out what that capital T value was. So, what I can do with my model here is split it into the area under the graph equals the distance travelled. That's the key part of this thing here. This value here is going to equal the area under the graph. So for my triangle on the left hand side, it's going to be 24 times 80 divided by 2. Let's grab a calculator. That equals 960, so that's the left hand triangle. On the right hand triangle, it's going to be 24 on the height and 48 on the base. So 24 times 48 over 2. We're dividing by 2 here because it's a triangle. 24 times 48 uh, divided by 2 is 576. And then the middle bit, which is a rectangle, will be a height of 24 and a time of t. So that's going to just be 24t. And then, well, yeah, we don't know what that is. But we do know that all of these three elements here will add together to make 4,800. So it's going to be, well, let's simplify this. 960 add 576, which is 1536 plus 24t equals 4,800, 
Let's subtract that value onto the other side, the 1,536, 4,800 minus answer, which is 3264. And then the final thing would be to divide by 24, and that would give us 136 seconds. But the question here is to find the total time to travel between A and B. So the answer to question B is going to be 128 plus 136, and that will give us an answer of 264 seconds. Good, moving on to part C, suggest one improvement um, that could be made to make the model of the motion of the train from A to B more realistic. Um, well, it's probably likely to have more varied acceleration. The, the acceleration um, between at the start and at the finish is more likely to be uh, more curvy than just constant acceleration. So the acceleration, the acceleration is likely to not be constant. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer for this question here then. That's uh, question seven answered there. Worth uh, well, whoops, seven marks in total there. Let's now move on to question eight.